expectant? Are you expectant? Are you expecting God to speak to you? Are you tired of hearing God speak to you? Are you excited? Do you feel something is about to happen? Are you ready for an impartation? Are you ready for a touch from God? Or have you heard it too many times? Have you heard from God too many times? Is there nothing new to learn? Is there nothing new to receive? I believe God is about to speak to us. I'm excited. And so with open hearts and with expectant spirits, let's welcome to preach to us this evening, my prophet and your prophet, Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the grace that you've given us to experience today. We are grateful and we are blessed. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a few seconds, minutes. Tonight is an anointing. I don't know if you have some oil. Have you got some oil ready? All right. Psalm 45. Today is honor your prophet Sunday. So I want to pray a blessing uh, upon all of you who honor and have any honor to give. Now my message is entitled Silence 1, Silence 2, and Silence 3. Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching or concerning the king. My, pe- my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured onto thy lips. Therefore, God hath blessed thee forever. Now, the things you say greatly contribute to a blessing on your life. That's why the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So grace is poured unto thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Verse 3. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. O most mighty. With thy glory. And thy majesty. And in thy majesty. Ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Ride prosperously because of three things. Truth, any form of wickedness, Deception will truncate your prosperity. Yes, it will terminate it. And meekness, the great secret. There are two great secrets, secret powers. Humility and holiness. Humility and holiness are two great powers that are within something that is prosperous. Yes. So, ride prosperously because of truth, genuineness, honesty, absence of deception, absence of lies, absence of pretense. And meekness, humility, 
no humble person can speak against an authority figure whom God has placed. Even in your office. You, you will not speak in a certain way about somebody who has built something that has employed you to work of which you know nothing. What do you know? Many people want the wealth of America but do not want to go through what America did humbly to become America. They are not humble enough to do what America did to become America. America did not become America by having invigilators of exams reading out the answers. Number one, A. Number two, B. As is done in certain countries. And I don't want to mention any country. You can choose any country. Just choose an alphabet. America was not built with a fatally deficient educational system in which the students collect offerings to give to the invigilator to move away. Collections. America was not built with people sending WhatsApp of the examination, the official examination to the parents of the class page in the morning before the exam. America was not built on falsehood in that way, if you want what they have. Fake educational systems where people close their eyes and everything goes on and the government sends their children to um, other nations. Don't, don't, think, don't think I'm talking about any particular country. You don't know what, you don't know anything. I'm talking about nations. Ride prosperously because of truth and humility. What you criticize, you don't love. What you speak against and mock, you are not humble towards that thing. You are proud and lifted up. That is why you can mock and laugh and sneer and raise up your nose and make comments and re-describe things. And you are cursed because of that. Ride prosperously because of truth and because of meekness. You may not have respect for that pastor, but God raised him up in spite of your opinion. <laughs> in spite of your comments. He's driving the car that he's driving in spite of what you feel, in spite of what you say. In all your huffing and puffing, you were not recognized or acknowledged by those, those great people. That prophet you despised, he was called in and honored. Ride prosperously because of truth, because of meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Experience will teach you a lot. Your hand is the one that gets experience. And as you get experience, you learn a lot of terrible things. Verse 5. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is ever. A right scepter. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes because of the anointing. 
Because when you're anointed, your clothes become anointed. And cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made thee glad. Karabasatalaba. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Yes, there are honorable women. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in the gold of Ophir. Now, the oil of gladness is my prayer for all of you. You see, the oil of gladness speaks of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is someone who has been given to us to make us glad. Unspeakable joy. And joy that bubbles without a lot of reasons why you should be happy. Unspeakable joy. So I'm standing here as a father to many children, spiritual children, and a father to many churches and pastors and bishops. I brought you forth. You know it. And I have a certain authority. So I'm standing here in that capacity to bless you with the oil of gladness. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness. He's talking about Jesus, the one we are following. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Speaking of Jesus. Jesus Christ loved righteousness. Derek Prince said something one time that made me take note. He said, your only protection against being deceived is your love of the truth. It's like not only must you know the truth, but you must love it and want it. You want the truth to be real. That's your only guarantee because he explained it like in 2 Thessalonians 2 that because they did not love the truth, God sent them a delusion that they should believe a lie. So he said, your protection from being deceived is to love the truth. The, the verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Unrighteousness has deceivableness in it. When you do unrighteousness, you get deceived by what you are doing. And he says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, because of this, this is the reason. For this reason, God sent them a strong delusion so that they believe lies. It's one of the terrible punishments you can ever have is to believe a lie. And later find out that you were wrong. Yes. If you want a judgment that is very severe, is to believe a lie and later discover that you are completely hoodwinked. Hoodwinked. You are completely and totally deceived. <laughs> it's like walking with a man and then at a point he tells you, I just want to tell you something. What is it? So I'm a woman. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm sure you were surprised by that. You see, you were, you were not expecting that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's your beloved too. Yeah. 
in, uh, and um, those of you who have watched Michael Jackson, uh, short movie, Thriller, Thriller, he turned into, uh, as he was walking with uh, the girl at the very beginning, he said, you know, I like you and all that. Then he turned and stopped and he talked to her and he said, you know, I'm not like other guys. And, she's, and he said, why, Michael? No, I, I like you. I said, but I'm, I'm not like other guys. I said, what, 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 what do you mean by you're not like other guys? That's when he started to turn into. <laughs> what a shock to find out that he's not like other guys. He's something else. And he said, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Like you really want the truth. And you are a stickler for realities and truths. For this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So you are, you are often sent into darkness because you have not got a firm love for truth. So when you see in Hebrews 1 verse 9, it says, Thou hast loved righteousness. You, it's something you don't just have to practice, but love it. Love the truth. Love righteousness. It's a condition. It changes from just doing it to loving it. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. Karabasata. May you receive the oil of gladness, a source of abundant joy in your life. Amen. Amen. Now, why would I say silence one? <laughs> because this morning I was sharing with you 10 things you can avoid. Throwing a stone it's going to throw back. Digging a pit. Put it back on the screen. It's going to... Digging a pit to make somebody go down. It's going to, you're going to go down. You are the one going to fall into what you are digging. Because digging is an active thing. It's like this thing you are doing. It's like an activity that is active. Keep on doing something. You know, there are people who strike you and there are people who are just there. And somebody who makes an active move against you. That's the difference between Judas and Peter. Judas actively had meetings and was doing things against his master. And Peter was there and then he was overtaken by events. You know, and then when he was put on the spot, he said, no, I've not seen him before. <laughs> No, which is a kind of surprise. <laughs> but where you have 10 years or 15 years of treachery and actively doing things, then you have moved into an active digger of pits. Rata parosa. Putting a stick in front of somebody's leg. That is the offense or the Greek scandal on. Mocking your father as a child. Mocking. You know, and as a father, I've seen people laugh at me. You know, like, oh, they don't know this. Oh, you don't, do, you know, do you know this? Do you know that? Oh, you don't know this. You don't know that. Oh, you don't know, you don't know Netflix. You don't know uh, iPad. You don't know phone. You don't know iPhone. You don't know this. And you see the lacing of mockery. Not admiration. Oh, you don't know that. You don't know this. And I've seen people cackling laughter. Laughing their heads off. Mocking. <laughs> it's what I've seen it. There's nothing that I preach I have not seen. Talking and mocking. The Bible says the eye that mocketh. You see, even the eye. One day I, am, I saw somebody looking at me and I knew that the person loved me and I decided to employ the person because I could see it in the eye. There are things you can see from your eye. 
saw punishment. He that despised Moses' law without mercy and that two or three witnesses. He died without mercy. Died without what? Mercy. Died with, you see, there is dying with mercy and there is dying without mercy. No mercy. For what? For despising Moses' law. So what Moses said. Despising it. Of how much more saw punishment, saw a punishment are those who have trodden underfoot, tried to stamp down and stamp out the voices and the ministry of God's servants. How much more saw punishment? Huh? I hope you are noticing that I'm reading from the Bible. Mm. Have trodden underfoot the servant of God and have done despite, despisement of the spirit of grace. What is grace? God says, I give you what you don't deserve and you despise. As Paul said, dishonoring fathers, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father, honor thy mother. I gave birth to, if you are here and you are a pastor, I gave birth to you. And if you are a bishop, I consecrated, there's not even one bishop. And or any pastor anywhere in, within our small network. And you know it. And you know it. Yes. Honor thy father. Thy father is not because a father because he's old. I became a father when I was 26 or 27 years old. It's not age. It's the father you brought forth the person. That is not what makes you a father. Because you are an old man. You are a father because you made somebody exist. The person did not exist and you made him exist. That's what makes you a father. Honor the one who causes you to exist. And thy mother, which is the first commandment we promise. Verse 3. That it may be well with you. You know, this verse, I used to hear the reference every time talking about it. He said, if you don't honor your father and if you don't honor your mother, it will never be well with you. It will ne- he, was, he used to say, it will never be well with you and you will not live long. He spoke about how somebody went to the grave of his father, whom he has dishonored, to kneel down on the grave of his father and cry and weep for mercy and forgiveness because he has dishonored the father who has died. That it may be well with you and that you may live long. Hmm. Number seven. Repaying good with evil. The order I gave you is not the order here. Better follow this one. (laughs) Whoso rewardeth good with evil, evil shall not depart from his heart. You be careful though. Anybody who has done good to you, you know, one time I was in a certain country somewhere, and a man came to me. He was talking about something in the business, and he was having a conflict. I think he was into something to do with steel. And now he was his own businessman. And there was another businessman in the church. I asked him, how did you become? He said, oh, I went to work here. Did you have anything? I didn't have anything. He went to work there. And as he worked there, he's learned how to do the business And the man even helped him to set him up. Now, he doesn't know him. He doesn't talk to him. And is having a major conflict with the person. I told the man that uh, this man is your father in business. Today, I am 100% sure that he is a pauper. I said, he's your father in at least in the business. He He made you to exist. You watch and see. Yes, he did you good. Psalm 7. Verse 1. 
Oh Lord, my God, indeed do I put my trust. Save me from all that persecute me. Lest he tear my soul. Oh Lord, my God. If I have done this, and if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, somebody is happy with you and flowing with you, and is at peace with you, and I've rewarded evil unto the person. I don't know what to say for you. I don't know what to say for you. Number eight. Proverbs 26, Message Bible. Verse 27, Message Bible. Malice backfires. Spite boomerangs. <laughs> yes. Malice backfires. You know, this verse reminds me, I remember some years ago, there was one of these guys left the church. And uh, one of our pastors went to see him. Now, this pastor was connected to him even by blood, by relation. When he went to see him, hey, the man said so many things. One of the things he even said that I cannot stay here from the things that he's saying. He said, I cannot stay here again. I said, wow. But as he continued talking, then, I, so, I mean, I thought this person was going to leave us because the way the guy spoke. Then when he finished talking, he said, as I look at him, I said, this, this man is full of evil. The malice that he spoke, eh, it backfired. And the man whom he was talking to found this man so horrible that he decided to rather sacrifice his biological and blood relation with the guy to be in the church. And he's still in the church. He is, if he's watching, he knows what I'm talking about. The venom from the guy and the words that he spoke, you will not even believe it. He said, I cannot stay here anymore, based on the things that he was, he's, going, he's coming to say. The information that he has. <laughs> Malice boomerangs. <laughs> oh, Malice backfires. And spite boomerangs. Because people see through it and say, you are sick. You are hurt. There's something wrong with you. You are mad. You've gone crazy. There's something wrong with you. You are proud. Grow up. Get over it. Yes. Are you there? Being unthankful. Because that when they knew God, they were not thankful. But became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was Darkened. Romans 1 21. And because they were unthankful, God also gave them up to uncleanness. You see, that's why some people are lost in darkness. One day I, I met a man who said to me, he does not believe in God. At all. The next time, I mean, you never see a person so vehemently opposed to the idea that God exists. The next time I encountered a man, he was filled with so many demons. I mean, you can't even believe that even a normal unbeliever doesn't behave like how he behaves today. And I realized that when you are not thankful and God gives you up, the demons come more and they swallow you up. God gave them up and the thing becomes wild. Number 11, uh, number 10. Becoming demonized. 
Jesus answered and said, I have not a devil. I have not a devil, but I honor my father. And you do dishonor me. So ladies and gentlemen, all these, and you see in Job 17, it said, mine eye also is dim by reason of sorrow, and all my members are as a shadow. Verse 8. Job 17, verse 8. Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the innocent. Verse 9. And the righteous also shall hold on his way. He shall persist on his way. And he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. You know, I saw some people mocking Bishop Oedipo. When I say mocking, eh, you can't believe it. One brother sent me a message from Nigeria. And he said to me, he went into the interior of Nigeria. And he saw Bishop Oyedepo having some, a, a new strategy that he's building 10,000 churches this year. Yes, the righteous shall hold on his way. The righteous shall do what? Hold on his way. That's in Nigeria. That's in Nigeria. And he that had clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. 10,000, yes. He said 10,000 churches this year. Yes. And somebody is sitting there mocking like a mocking bed. Now, when you do not get into the negativity, you can come to a place of silence where there is nothing said about you, neither good nor bad. Silence one. Nothing is said over you by your pastors. Silence two. Nothing is said about you by your fathers. Silence three. Nothing is said over you by authority figures. So these curses is the worst. The middle ground is silence. And the next level is blessings. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. yes. You see, you don't need to curse any orangu or ratas. The Bible says, judge not. Judge not. Leave them. Jesus did nothing to Judas. Even he, he attended the, the last supper. So come and let's do communion. Last communion. Even when he said, ah, open your mouth, ah, it was very personal with him. Ah, Judas, ah, ah, hmm. Then he tapped that. My boy, my boy, my boy, my finance man. <laughs> ah, everybody, ah. Swallow, swallow, swallow. Yes, drink, hmm, drink. Silence one. Authority figure. But today, may you get the blessing of an authority figure. Genesis chapter 14. And I have only three of these. Genesis chapter 14. Verse 17. Let's even read verse 16. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chede Lauma. 
and of the kings that were with him. At the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. Are you there? Yes. The king's dale is a king's valley. Now, Melchizedek, I want you to see how Abraham became Abraham. He didn't become Abraham by silence of authority figures over his life. Silence one. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of the most high God. He was an authority figure because he was a king. There are people in authority positions who can change your destiny. And in verse 19, the Bible says, and he blessed him. You see, it was in silence. Oh, good evening. Good afternoon. He blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham. And notice his name was not Abraham. It was Abraham. His name changed in Genesis 17 and verse 5 when God said, you will no longer be called Abraham. You will be called Abraham, which means father of nations. You barren man, you will be called father. Karata mora sabaraba. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and the earth. <laughs> and blessed be the most high God which hath delivered thee, thine enemies, into thine hand. And Abraham gave him tithes. He honored him. You see, brothers and sisters, your life consists of the blessings that have been spoken, not of the silence. Not of the silence. Blessed be Abraham. Blessed be Abraham. Uh, I say Abraham. Abraham. And it looks funny, eh? And he was Abraham in chapter 15. And he was Abraham in 16. But in 17, his destiny began changing by the blessing spoken over him. And he started to have visions and interactions with God. Karama no Sandara Baba. May there not be silence about you. You know, I need you to check your life and see whether any words, good words, have been spoken over you. Yes. Oh, yes. All the ten things I gave they are working against us because they are not personal things. They are Bible verses, Bible teachings. Now you begin to see blessings of the Father. Are you listening? Yes. Whoever is an authority figure in your life, May you be blessed. And as I stand here as an authority figure in your life, by all means I am, even if you say I'm not. Tabola <laughs> Bashimbole Makete Baraba. May you be blessed. Of the most high God. Amen. 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 Number two. The blessings of the father. Genesis 27. Verse 26. And his father, Isaac, 
said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Come near and kiss me. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and was silent. No. And he blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. The smell of my son is the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Wow. May your presence evoke blessings. The smell of my son is the smell of my son, the smell of a viper, the smell of a cobra, the smell of a vicious biting animal. Therefore, God, give thee the dew of heaven. <laughs> Short words. And the fatness of the earth. Plenty of corn and wine. These are a father's, there's not a father's silence, but a father's blessing. The dew of heaven. Fatness. Fat, is he? Fatness. The fat is the riches. Is the part that will make the fire burn. It's like the rich part of the earth. And truly, when you look at Israel, this is Jacob, Israel. You see the riches. When you go to Israel, you see that it's not a small nation. It's not a small nation at all. It's a nuclear power. <laughs> Yeah, you rarely find a Jew, all the billionaires. The smell of my son is at the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. And then in verse 29, let people serve thee. And nations bow before thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. He made him a boss. He made him a leader. Let people serve thee. Let nations bow to you. Let kingdoms and nations give up to you. All the wars of the Philistines and the Amalekites and all the enemies of Israel. Let nations bow down to thee. It was not the silence of a father, but the blessings of a father. Cursed be he that cursed thee. And blessed be he that blessed thee. You know, simple words. Spoken. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo said something. He said, one day he met a mentor. Somebody that was his mentor. And the man said to him, where I stopped, you will be 20 times more than where I stopped. Where I stop, you'll be 20 times more than where I stopped. Wow. Blessings that are working. Blessings that are working. Fathers imparting short statements. The smell of my son is like the smell of a field. Which the Lord has blessed. Oh yes. You see some of you have only silence. You cannot look and find a word. Spoken over you. Yes. And so I bless you 
Yes. Be Lord over thy brethren. Let nations bow down to thee. Let people serve thee. Amen. One time I remember I was listening to Bishop Oyedepo and he said that I think he visited his wife's father. And he said that his wife's father said to him, when your time comes, are you listening? Yes. So when your time comes, whatever is done for fathers will be done for you. Wow. Yes. When your time comes, whatever is done for fathers will be done for you. Because when it was time to do something for me, to bring money, you brought it. To bring building, you bought it. Vehicle, you brought it. When your time comes, whatever is done for fathers, at that time, if it's aeroplanes that are done for fathers, if it is cars that are done for fathers, when your time comes, it will be done for you. Whatever is done for fathers, when your time comes. It's different from silence. You can see there's a difference between this and silence. Yes. If somebody tells you where I stopped, you do twenty. You go twenty times more. It is not silence. Silence too. No. A father speaking over you. Karando sapalaba. Let nations bow down before thee. Let people serve thee. The Lord give you the fatness of the earth and the dews of heaven. Matamura matabalaba shandala babandalaba. Brethren, I came here this evening to bless you and say, as you celebrated me, may he celebrate you too. Ramandalaba kapalaba. Yes. I remember one time I visited the archbishop. Sit down. I don't know why I stand. I've not finished preaching. Hey, no. Tamarosa batalabasha. Keep preaching. I visited him, I died birthday, something, some one of those things. And I said, Well, I have to leave. I have to send you. He was coming. I said, Oh, he doesn't have to come. So he's coming to the car. He came out of his house and I was parked on the road. When we got to the car, he lifted his hand. He said, As you have celebrated me, may you be celebrated and may you be honored. As you came to honor me and celebrate me, may you be celebrated and honored. Tambo Kalaso, Tamado Labakata. Yes. There's a difference. Yes. When your time comes, whatever is done for fathers will be done for you. Because when it was time, when it was time, when it was time, whatever was done, you came to do it. You came, it was money to bring, you brought money. There was a building to build, you build buildings. Vehicles, you brought vehicles. When it's your time, in your time, Whatever is done for fathers will be done for you. And I prophesy to you pastors and ministers that when it's your turn, when it's time for honor, whatever children do for fathers in your time, it will be done for you. Where you travel to come, Rata Mosaka children will travel. If they travel, they will travel. If they do, they buy aeroplane, they will buy aeroplane. When your time comes, whatever children do for fathers, it will be done for you by the children. Receive that blessing. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah, so I have not finished preaching, please. I have not finished preaching. Karamadosa <laughs> paladavada. Mm. The silence of an authority figure? No. The silence of a father? No. And now the silence of a priest. Priestly blessings. Silence three or blessing three. You either get silence or you get a blessing. 
Do you want silence or you want a blessing? Yeah. <laughs> Nakata. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron. Talk to Aaron, the priest, and his sons, saying, On this wise, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel. This is how you will bless the children of Israel. You speak blessings on the children of Israel. On this wise. Put the scripture there. On this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel. You see, priestly blessings determine your path. The blessings of your pastor determines your pathway as well. It's not just, it's not just rules and little, little, do this and don't do this. Blessings. Yes. Blessings. On this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel. Saying unto them. You have to say specific things. Specific things. Whatever children do for their fathers during your time, it will be done for you. Hallelujah. Beautiful. You see, because your time is going to come. Amen. Where children and people you have cared for, people you have loved, people you have honored, people you have been good to, it, there will be a time that those people will rise up and remember you. Because in your time, in the other person's time, you remembered what to do. Like one child was going, his, he, the father got old, and the father was a businessman, so the father's father was very old, and the father's father used to play with the son in the house. And he said, he's taking him to an old children's home. Old father's home. Old, well, old what? Old people's home. Yeah. So when they were going, the, 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 the grandson was begging the father, don't take grandpa. He said, no, we have to take him. I'm very busy. I don't have time. I have to leave him there. And they got to the old people's home and he left the grandfather there. And the grandfather was crying, don't leave me here. Don't leave me here. The father said, look, my business is very important. I cannot. I need to make ends meet and so on. The grandfather was crying, please, please, I want to stay. I don't want to stay with all these people. I don't know anybody here. I'm afraid I don't want to stay. They said, no, you have to stay. We have so many things that we are doing. We travel, we move here, we move here. There's no time. Nobody to serve, nobody to cook for you. So they left the father there. And they got in the car. It was just the father and his son, a small boy. And the son was quiet. Not said a word. Out of the going, the father said, why are you not talking? What is wrong? What is it? Is it because we left grandpa? The son didn't say anything. What is it? And then finally the son spoke. He said, I've seen where I must bring you when you grow up. When you grow up. I've seen where I will bring you to. And the father's heart began to beat. <laughs> Whatever children do for their fathers. During your time, it will be done for you. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Mm. On this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. The Lord bless thee. And keep thee. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. <laughs> you know what is gracious? Gracious means it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. I've been seen. How many would like your sins and your mistakes to be? I haven't seen it. That's gracious. That's the meaning of gracious. It's okay, it's okay. Play, play, play. Oh, no, I want to give you the details. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Just play, play, play. Play on. 
Play on. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance. You see, his countenance was down. He was angry. Suppose you came to talk to somebody and you are talking to the person. The person is doing this. Okay, okay. Mm, mm. The Lord lift up and say, all right, okay. As against this or this. The Lord lift up. Every anger directed at you is reversed and converted into pleasure and peace. He says, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You see, blessings and short statements. In fact, now I'm going to be blessing very short blessings. But I've seen that shorter ones. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo was talking. He said, his father. You see, that was his father-in-law. His father-in-law said, when your time comes, whatever children do, it will be done for you. But his father told him one day, he said, the road will never be blocked against you. Because the road is not blocked against someone holding a cutlass. Yes. <laughs> the road is never blocked against a man Holding, who holds a cutlass? <laughs> the road will never be blocked against you. Makaraba sato baraba la ba. Malatabaru kataba bando la baraba la ba. The Lord bless thee. Yes. The Lord what? Bless thee. Yes. The road will never be blocked against thee. So, my prayer today is that the blessing of a priest, yes, will be over you. The blessing of a father will be over you. And the blessing of an authority figure will be over you and upon you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will have great blessings yes, in your life. One day I visited Archbishop Duncan Williams. I bless him. You see, it was the venison that uh, Jacob made for his father that provoked the blessing. Then he pulled me into a toilet. A toilet. And bless me in the toilet. Yes. He blessed me. I couldn't even remember the words. But I remembered one statement that he made. He blessed me. Yes. He said, no one has done this for me. Yes. And he blessed me in the toilet. There was nobody there. Of course. Marataku <laughs> Parama. Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. 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 Sweet words. But then he said he he met one of his mentors. (laughs) And his mentor told him to do something strange. He did it. He said, go here. Do this. This room. Come. Went in the room. Came out. And he said, from now, receive the blessings of on time. (laughs) the blessings of what on time time. before the need arises the supplies will be there before what the need arises the supplies will be there the blessings of on time (laughs) it's very different from silence no comments no comments no comments 
Silence one. No comment from authority figures in your life. Silence two. No comment from fathers. Your father looks at you and blesses you. Or no comment. Or curses you. Silence three. The blessing of the priest and the spiritual authority over your life. May all these blessings be your portion. And today, as we come at this amazing honor your prophet service, which I'm teaching you to honor, and I want you to learn it, so that one day, there will be some statements you will remember. Yes. One time I prayed for somebody, I failed to bless the person three times. I don't know why. I said, I bless you, and I bless you, and I bless you three times. One day a pastor came. I prayed with him. He honored me. I prayed with him. I said, I rebuked the challenger. The challenger. The challenger of your life and your ministry. I rebuke him. Yes. I didn't know anything about it. I just... Let nations bow before thee. Let people serve thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. The smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. May you hear good words spoken over your life. And time and time again when we come to church, during the communion, the blessings, the different things, may those blessings be on your life. Every standing. Take your oil. Take the anointing oil. The oil of gladness. If you believe in it. yeah. Believe. Just take a drop in your house. Paramashundala <laughs> Baba. The oil of gladness. A lot of happiness is coming to your life. A lot of happiness. Laughter where your ribs begin to have pains. Laughter which come from your ribs. And joy of the Lord. Come to you as a reward. For your honor, the Lord gives you joy. The Lord give you peace. The Lord anoint you with the oil of gladness. Now rub it over your head. Rub it on your head. The Lord bless you. And the Lord give you a good smell. The smell of a field that the Lord himself has blessed. The smell of a good son. And the smell of a good daughter. The Lord lift you up. The Lord end every siege and battle concerning your life and your soul. The Lord help you mightily to break out of the ranks of the enemy that have surrounded you. The Lord lift you out of the miry clay and place your feet upon a rock to stay. The Lord heavily bless you. Let nations bow to you. Let your challengers bow to you. Let your mockers bow to you. Let the scoffer's mouth be filled with gravel and stones. Let them that curse thee be cursed. Let them that help thee be blessed. Let those that bless you be lifted up. Let those that remember you be remembered by the Lord. The Lord bless thee. The Lord help you. The Lord heal you. The Lord anoint you with the oil of gladness. May joy return. May sorrow be banished from your house. May sadness and mourning be taken far from you. God, open the windows of heaven and send many angels 
into your life uh, from Australia to America to Africa to South Africa to East Africa West Africa and all over the world where you are watching the Lord send the mighty angel I see the doors of heaven open with manifold blessings descending and arriving in the houses of the people of the Lord let your dwelling place be filled with light be filled with light let light and brightness come out of your houses ah let your windows bring forth light rando satalba lucarata whatever is dark and evil in your house i punish it in the name of jesus i vanquish the enemy i cancel the enemy's participation in your marriage and your life and your home i reject the involvement of demon powers and demon spirits i overcome and overpower dragons and crocodiles and evil entities that have entered with a strong bite to hold you down i curse them i rebuke them i reject them in the name of jesus receive power from above power over power power against power power against the power of the enemy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth whatever defies you whatever mocks you whatever despises you i curse it today in the name of jesus whatever mocks after you rataka and defies your authority and your presence and mocks your person ratakosana let it wither and fade away in the name of jesus christ and let the oil of gladness replace the sorrows the sadness the depression the concerns the worries of your life and the anxieties and may the lord establish you with the oil take another drop of the oil one more drop of this oil for the second time rub it in your hand whatever resisted the first blessing bows to the second anointing in the name of jesus christ of nazareth whatever defies you and challenges you whatever stands up to mock at you arakata breaks in pieces now i break it down i break it down in the name of jesus christ of nazareth ah receive power over and against the powers of the enemy and whatever lifts itself as a Goliath in your life comes down today in Jesus name whatever mocks you dies whatever I mock it at your father that Romada goes blind it is a cursed eye in the name of Jesus Christ take another oil for the third time for the third time on the third day he arose put the oil on your head whatever is dead and stinking in your life comes alive by resurrection power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost come alive come alive come alive come alive come alive every stinking dead thing in your life is cast today life enters you be blessed of god be blessed with the blessing of the priest the lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace in the name of jesus christ every dead thing is declared return back to life you are living you are rejoicing you are glad you are full of joy joy unspeakable from the blessing of the lord and the blessing of this powerful anointing over your life today in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of jesus may the god of abraham the god of isaac 
the God of Jacob, the God who raised up Joseph, the God who rescued him from the prison and took him out of the dungeon and made him a prime minister. May that Lord visit you now and take you out of the dark places and place you on the high places of the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. The oil of gladness, the oil of gladness, the oil of gladness, the oil of gladness. Be anointed with the oil of gladness. Your sorrows are wiped away. Resurrection power raising you up, raising you out. Every stinking and dead thing is ended today rising power of the Holy Ghost is upon you give thanks to the Lord right now thank you Lord thank you Lord for this marandola makatabara balon derimondala mandare bokatabara bandala babandala oh just give thanks to the Lord for this powerful anointing three times you have been anointed whatever resisted the first one bows in the second one and whatever is dead in the third anointing comes back to life your life is given back to you your life is returned unto you whatever you lost is coming back to you a hundredfold in jesus name and everybody said amen god bless you god bless you hallelujah be seated father thank you for the blessing you've given to us this time in the mighty name of Jesus. Thanks for the blessing of a priest. Thanks for the blessing of a father. The smell of my son. May your smell be a good smell. The smell of my son. God has said everybody God has blessed us all God has heard your cry the Lord has lifted up his countenance for you and over you in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ of Nazareth Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your great blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Well, thank God for his blessings today. We are really blessed. blessed. The Lord bless you. Blessed. All of you who sent your venison, honoring your prophet, your gifts and your offering, I say thank you and I say the Lord bless you Amen. with all 